panel here to assess the deep divide in America and where our country might be going is Dr. Jordan Peterson, professor at the University of Toronto. Professor, really good to have you on. I believe it's the first time on Newsmax, certainly exclusive. Really, really great to get you. So many people follow you. You're one of the, one of the bright minds, the original thinkers in, in this country. We see, we've seen a big divide. It seems to be getting worse and worse. Are we on the verge of, let's say, a woke revolution where race and gender replace meritocracy for success? What are your thoughts? I'm working with an organization. We, we hope to make it an international organization called the Alliance for Responsible Citizenship. We have our inaugural conference in at the end of October in London, in the UK. We hope we'll get about 18,000 people there for the public event. And we're trying to put forward a vision of the future that's based on something positive. And that's what people should be focusing on. Instead of focusing on false apocalypses and imaginary enemies. And if we focus on false apocalypses and imaginary enemies, we're going to produce both. And that's a very, very bad idea. And there's no reason for it because we have the capability, technical and ethical, if we want to draw on it, to make of our existence anything that we would like it to be. And so that's what we should be focusing on doing. And that's what political leaders, that's the message that political leaders should be also putting forward as far as I'm concerned. And, and the alternative to that is very bleak. Well, well, Doc, Dr. Peterson, so you say false uh, fears and, and whatnot, but in this country now what we have, uh, we've seen prosecutors who are bankrupting, who are maybe throwing people in jail, uh, government officials, people they don't agree with, Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, yep. without evidence, simply because they don't agree with what, they're, what the other side is doing. These prosecutors have become drunk with control and power. That's not imaginary. No, well, look, I'm facing the same kind of prosecution in Canada. I yep. mean, my own licensing body is attempting, they want to re-educate me, which is very comical in many ways. Uh, because I'm probably relatively resistant to re-education, as it turns out. And um, the entire reason for that is political. But that's, that's not an excuse, partly because we have to understand that the polarizing forces that are, that are producing this kind of uh, catastrophe are a very small minority of people. And they're all, that's almost always the case. And the trick for everyone to avoid catastrophe is to not fall into their snares. And the, you have to think about that in some ways, you know, regardless of provocation. Now, I, that doesn't mean I think that people have no right to defend themselves, because I don't think that at all. But we don't want to bring about the worst of all possible states of affairs so that the people who want to dance in the ruins will be able to happily do so, claiming all along to have been correct. That's not a good outcome, and it's incumbent on leaders, and I would say that would include the people who are running for presidency of the United States, to put forward a vision to people that's invitational and compelling so that they can follow that instead of being led down terrible trails, even by, you know, even by necessary or even by inevitable anger at the forces that have been unfairly arrayed against them. You know, we're called upon constantly by the wise people of ancient tradition not to fall prey to resentful vengeance, let's say, even in this, even in the face of genuine enmity, the the cost of that is just too high. And we could, we could pick a better path, and that's our ethical responsibility. And we could do that, and it would be better for everyone. We can't fall prey to that, you know. And even if we are provoked, and there is provocation, there's no doubt of that. But it's the provocation is being put forward by really, like a very noisy and very dangerous minority of people. Well, yes, agree, we can't fall prey, but what does that mean? In, in, the, in the same token, you say, in the same breath, you say, but let's not yeah. fall for, let's not be drawn into a fight with these people. Well, so, again, in the case of prosecutors, forget Trump and Julia, prosecutors can prosecute who they want, whether there's evidence to prosecute or not. It, it, it's, so how do you, so don't fight, but also don't fall prey, that's very optimistic, sir. Well, look, in, in this situation that I'm facing in Canada, the threat to my, um, to my license, the question is, well, what should I do about that? And I mean, I could comply 
I could drop my license. I could, uh, I could destroy my life in irritation and anger, or I could just let everybody know what's going on. I could tell the truth and I could try to put forward a better vision of the way things could be. And that's a better, it's a more compelling idea. And it's also a better strategy. You know, if I can do that extraordinarily carefully, then the probability that victory will come my way is much higher. And and I mean victory of the total sort, because that would also involve me not destroying my life in, in foolish recrimination. You know, I mean, even if people are persecuting you, let's say, and even if they're doing that unjustly, if, if you fall prey to a vengeful bitterness as a consequence of that, then not only do you have all the persecution that's there and the foolishness that goes along with that, but then you also have to suffer from all the resentful bitterness. And then if you want you know, to imagine a victory for your enemies that's absolutely complete, that would be it, right? They get to persecute <laughs> you and destroy your psychological integrity, let's say, and your peace of mind. That's not a good idea. <laughs> that's a, I will tell you what, I will take those words, I will heed your advice, and I'll stop arguing with my executive producers and bosses about what segments I can and cannot air. Dr. Jordan Peterson, I want to say thank you for joining us. Appreciate your wisdom and your brilliance. And folks, make sure to check out Peterson Academy. It's set to launch in November. And Dr. I'd love to invite you back again very soon. Really yep. a, a, an asset to the show. Thank you, sir. You bet, man. Very nice to talk to you. And thank you very much. And keep your head up down there in the U.S. You have a hell of a country. I was at the presidential debate last night. And you have a, it's an amazing place, you know, your, your country. And you know, I hope you guys have enough sense to stay out of the mire because the whole world needs you. That is such the, 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 the we should have started with that. That's where we should have gone. We'll bring it back and talk about that next time. Thank you, doctor. You bet, man. Yep.